Hello everybody and welcome to the short webinar about, webinar about uh, balcony glazings and glazing in general and how to how to use Prodlib, Prodlib with it. Uh, here's here's a short agenda for show, uh, what we are, what I'm planning to show show to you today and. Uh, well, feel free to comment and send any questions at any point of time to the to the chat box there and my colleague Essie will be trying to uh, kick me if I if I don't notice if you're sending anything so uh, anything that comes to your mind uh, during or after the presentation please feel free to feel uh, feel free to ask but uh, uh, yeah the plan plan for today is to just to give a quick spin about Prodlib, what it is and and uh, what do we do and then about libraries what we have uh, in in the service and how to use them shortly in as a standalone in the web library uh, Archicad and revit and especially libraries that are related to to the balconies and balcony glazings uh, we have a couple of uh, railing glazing manufacturers there and some additional content as well but but uh, let's let's start with with what is Prodlib. I mean, basically, what we do is that we try to combine. Just a moment, I'll get this to the correct place. So what we what we do is that we develop and share content of from manufacturers to designers. It's a free service for any architect, engineer, detailer uh, that you can find, uh, hopefully, uh, very useful and helpful content to. To, to improve your work, uh, workflow that you don't need to concentrate on all the details and the content what there is. And currently we have over 90 manufacturers who are sharing content through our applications uh, a bit in a different uh, formats and for different applications but there is there is already something available and also it's it's developing developing all the time so so there's coming more libraries uh, in with increasing speed. But, but to the basic usage, uh, we have a couple of different methods of how to use the, the content that we have uh, have available. The first one and the easiest probably uh, for the new users is probably to use the weblib app, uh, approach. So basically using a web-based uh, library to search and, and find content that you want to, ha want to find. So for example, in this case, if I want to go to see uh, a product from Alnova and uh, this will go I can have the product hierarchy, and I can find content of of uh, of this uh, adapt uh, railing railing type. The attachments that is rela are related to this object can be found from the right side. So if I want to have a open a PDF, uh, I can I can open it uh, or load it to myself. I do need to log in. So any every user to be able to use the content, they, they, you need to log into the system. But after that, the content is free of charge fully, so it doesn't cost anything. But but it's important that we know that who is using the content, and and uh, uh, the also of course our customers, the manufacturers, know that who is using the content, and they can you can give feedback, and and we understand that uh, what is the how to develop it further further to so that it serves better the better the content uh, for for the design. So the weblib approach is is, uh, is is in that sense easy. It doesn't require in any installations, uh, and uh, you can access it access it from uh, well basically anywhere. Many of our customers have also the links. So uh, for example, Alnova Lumon, you can find direct link from the Lumon's web pages to to Prodlib. So so it will be easier to find find that uh, content. But we also can the user if you just go to Type prodlib uh, dot com uh, slash alnova for example in this case so except that if I write it spell it cor correctly it would work much better yes better so now it's a it's a uh, some specific information of the library and what what, what does it have content to and and uh, I can go jump to the web library or there's also an option to download Prodlib, and this means that I would actually download the application to use it uh, on that I can use as a standalone or inside the Revit or AutoCAD uh, on, and uh, uh, other applications. So this is the basic Weblib 
usage. It can be yeah found from the uh, from the weblib uh, icon at the moment from the top of our web pages. The other way of using it, and also the method that we actually recommend, especially when we are talking about more complicated co uh, components and uh, content. I mean, if I'm talking about single bolt or CAD file and so on, it's easy to download it and add it to your to any of the design design you have. But when we have configurable products uh, that uh, require selections and, and configuration, uh, they are not so easy to share as a single files. Uh, and, and with the application, we can also get some more usability for the content. So I'll show how it works, that one. To proceed with the uh, actual application, you need to install it to your computer. Uh, it goes from the download product. We have two versions, one for Windows, one for Mac. Uh, and the Mac is mainly to manage the Archicad content if you are an Archicad user in, in a Mac environment. But basically, the other ones, uh, it's uh, it's a Windows application that you download. You need to have administrative administrative rights, so it cannot be installed without that one. Uh, so that's just something that you need. But otherwise, it's a normal normal executable version. So downloading the software and then running the installation. After the installation, it will also ask you to you to register. So the same thing, you need need to be registered to use the use the application. After that, again, no, uh, it's all fully available. Once it's been installed, uh, you will find from your desktop, and OK, let's jump to that one later. So sorry about my messy desktop. Uh, but yeah, you will find from your desktop a new icon. It's called Project Nature. Uh, it can be also found from the bottom right corner. There's the, uh, there should used to have here a, a Product Manager icon, and it basically opens. If I open that one, it will open the standalone application. Let's change my language to be uh, the news I want to have in English as well, so I can see that one. So way the way this works is that on the left side, I can see the libraries that I have already installed to my computer. Well, I work with quite a lot of them, so I have a lots of them. I uh, I'll show a couple of th tricks how to group them a bit in an easier way to be able to find what you need in a, in a faster way. But when you open it for the first time, this basically this list will be empty. So there's nothing here. You will just have an Add Libraries icon. And if I click on this one, I will get a list of all the available manufacturers and the content what we have in the service. Uh, I have, I'll just do a moment. I'll hide all the installed versions. So these are new that I don't have at the moment. And if I want to select uh, one of them, I can just click it. It will give you me a bit more information. So this is some uh, uh, pontoon sol solutions, docs, and so on meant for the hardware design. And then it will be download. So this will just add the library to be able, able to use it as an offline uh, also, also. So once it's been downloaded, I don't need to have an internet connection to use it. The, if I have an internet connection, it will automatically check that the library is up to date. But uh, but that's all it all is doing on while while online. So from the list, find the libraries that you want to want to use. Uh, you can sort libraries by, for example, window manufacturers, or you can sort them to have walls and facades, uh, depending what what are the categories, or these balcony glazings and so on. Or you can just search it with the name can also search by sort by platform, so depending on what you are doing. Currently, we only have for SketchUp and Tecla, we have only a couple of libraries. These are sort of new functionalities that we've uh, we've uh, launched just recently. So, so that's they will be growing the number of libraries to support those ones. But there are a few of them as well. But but uh, in the case uh, before I jump to the libraries itself, uh, in a case like I have here, I have a lots of content already downloaded to my to myself, it can start to be already difficult to find what you are looking for. So for myself, I have created this kind of groups here so uh, that, that that I can I can find them, sort them, sort them uh, in an easier way, easier way and, and find them also inside the CAD and Revit software. This, these are also th things that are visible there in the inside the CAD Revit software I'll show in a moment. And if you want to use these ones, they can be done from the settings tab. So the settings and libraries grouping. 
So in this, these are the groups that I could see the titles. Maybe I could remove this one. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but but you can create your new, add new group to the to the list, save it, and once it's saved, I can go back to the browse and I can select any of these ones. Let's say that I would have now this group, uh, this manufacturer, Vauni, doing some fireplaces. I could select group two. So this is the list that I, I was seeing in the other, other page here. So I can add it to whatever group I want to have it, or to take it selected to non-grouped. Non so just a way to easier to sort sort the list here on of the available libraries. OK. And then the actual usage with the application. So I can start any of the libraries just by clicking the uh, sort of start uh, application. And now this is a customized uh, it's a user interface that we customize for every manufacturer. So this looks, uh, the basic is always the same. We have the product hierarchy on the left, and then we have some uh, more information of those ones. I can go selecting through the hierarchy tree or just select through the, the uh, icons here. And depending on the product, what I'm, what I'm, or what I want to show, uh, it has different kind of selections. The attachments that are related to this product can be seen here on the right side. So this has a DWG files, it has a PDFs, and it also has a Revit content. The Revit is a default hidden because it's a parametric object that is driven from inside the Revit software, but it's indicated that it can be found here. But for example, the, the specific disk. Uh, PDF file, I can just open it and it will open the to the default PDF viewer. So simple way of finding the related data for each manufacturer. But the look, Lumon has also the same thing, the basic hierarchy, a bit bit different how it's uh, located uh, here. Also have documents, uh, references, and the attachments again in the right side. So the principle is the same, even though the layout looks mildly different. Uh, then to the actual CAD content, for example, what we have in these cases, a uh, couple of ways of using it. Let me take something. Out. Let's start a new 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 uh, drawing so that you see that I don't have anything there in the bottom. Um, actually, I will do a small thing of, well, let's start this one. I'll hide that for a moment. I mean, there's, there's two ways of using uh, with, with uh, CAD software. We have integration with some, some CAD software. So we have it for AutoCAD, uh, BricsCAD, uh, CADs. Uh, the reason we launched the ZV CAD. Uh, so we have, in those cases, the prototype application can be seen directly inside the software. Like in this case, I have a full AutoCAD, so I can be seen, see it here. But for example, AutoCAD LT license, uh, that's limited already by Autodesk that you cannot install there any additional applications. So neither we cannot uh, add our our applications, but it can be used still, the content that we have easily with the with the LT version and with several other CAD software. So if I go to, well, let's, let's go from here. I'll select again. So open the user interface and in the place where I had, for example, this uh, adapt Adapt trailing. I had this CAD, uh, CAD attachment. The easy way to do it is I can just click the open and then it will open it to the uh, default CAD software, or I can just do a drag and drop. So I'll drag and drop it here and select the insertion point, and I should have the the, uh, the railing railing CAD file, the attachment here available. So just drag and drop. Find what you want. And drag and drop it to the pro, uh, to the to your project. So let's say I want to have a, a glazing from on top of top of the Alnova uh, railing. I want to have a lumen glazing. Uh, so I'll just add it here, and I can start. I could add it. Continue working from from adding it. Don't ask me if it's technically possible or not, uh, but but. but. That's, that's you can easy, easy way of, of using the existing content. 
these are all native content. They are done in AutoCAD, in Revit, in RCCAD, so they are they are working as as, as well, yeah, as they should. So drag and drop can be used. Well, one thing also is that let's let's say that you would need to send a CAD file. You find a find a attachment that you need to send to somebody else. Uh, it's what you can simply do is that I can track and drop it to my desktop here, and then just that put it as an attachment to an email. So it's easy way of also I can I can send it if if they don't want to load the full library or the product application. So it's you can you can help in that way as well. So this is how you can use the standalone content and application. Profin has like change the user interface. There is kind of sliding doors that can also be quite commonly used with, the, like in this case, there's a balcony behind there. So they also have uh, different kind of uh, glazing that you can, uh, uh, the door, door sliding doors and so on that we can open. They only have a Revit content at the moment, but, but, but that can be also, of course, very useful. So now the same thing. So this is this is the standalone approach. So this one, uh, I have a AutoCAD LT, or I have some other CAD software that that uh, we don't support directly. So then that would be the usage. But if I have the full AutoCAD or or some of the other CAD softwares that I mentioned earlier, the ProDip application and the content what I have downloaded are also visible here in a, or like in this case in the ribbon ribbon view. We recently added a new function for, like in my case, I have actually quite a pile of these libraries, so it gets already quite confusing that how, how do I find them. I can see the tabs that I had, I had here, favorites, balconies and glazings, build-ups and so on. So I can do that grouping. So that is the same grouping that I defined in the, in the product manager earlier. But in the last version, what we published uh, about a month ago or so what we can do is to also have this broadly panel. So it's a, it's a, in my case, it's a side panel that I have docked here in the side. This is a normal auto, AutoCAD uh, panel so that I can basically detach and I can even drag it to another screen and then have it located if I want to have it in a, uh, wherever I want, want to have it. Okay, I don't want to start that one yet, but let's see. Oh, dragging from here. Yeah, that makes it easier. So there it is. And here are the same uh, tabs that I have again as, a, as a, those uh, categories that I was, I was adding there. So here are my balcony, balconies and glazings category convert content. So now I can do, I can open, it opens basically the same user interface, but now it's opened inside the CAD software. Again, I want to go, I want to have a flex uh, and I want to have the this, the CAD file related to this one that is I can I can add it here. So the only difference compared to the standalone one is that there's basically two clicks less. In if I do the use the drag and drop function, I need to keep the scaling in the x and y directions. But now when I use it from inside the from inside uh, the uh, CAD software, I don't need to do it. So I can just. Uh, Show simply the insertion point, one click and direction, and that's it. So there are my CAD files. So the same thing: find what you want and add it to the add it to the project. They are always loaded to that ongoing drawing or file that you have going uh, you are working on. So so it's uh, no need to do or worry about separate separate loadings. But then let's jump to the. Uh, in my opinion, a bit even more more interesting part. I will also show how to use this in uh, uh, how to access the libraries in Archicad. But I am really poor user of Archicad, so I it will be very limited uh, what, what I will show you. But I'll show this a bit with one just a sample sample building here with, with in in a Revit. So let's see how it goes. No, I don't want to save this one. So I'll share change a bit my view. Settings, so this one on the left. So this is the plan view from, yes, this is from this level, so the first first floor level. Same thing in Revit as with the AutoCAD. The product comes visible here uh, in the inside the application, so that all the content is available. Also here we have the 
panel option, so I can use, I don't need to necessarily select it from the Prodlib tab, but I can use it from these, these tabs here. Can be also dragged and dropped the, the menu location, same way as, as here. But, but again, same principle. And as you notice, also uh, same user interface. So this is this is the idea that we try to, to do one, one way of, of uh, selecting and using the content and despite the software to support that that uh, method. So I want to definitely go and select myself a, let's say, flex. Uh, I do I want to have the, there's a couple of installation uh, options. You can see the preview image, what's what's changing. It's also actually affecting the, what are the handrail options here. So these are dependent on the product and on the manufacturer's content. The installation of the side of the slab, I could select the ellipse. Uh, I want to have the handrail height definitely in 1200. Clear, gla clear glass and yeah, I'll take no glazing for this one just to, or, well, I could also have a glazing on top of it, top of it, but, but, but I'll just do a no glazing for, for a start. And then it goes simply insert. I need to wait a moment that it loads it, it loads the content to my model, so I don't need to have anything preloaded here. Uh, it will load it to the to this to this project. And now the way I use it is I I use basically this is launching Revit's own railing functionality with some additional uh, uh, functionalities. What we add to that one, but the use it is I need to show the the location line is, line is the edge of the slab. So I have here the slab. I select this click. I always need to go like in Revit. You do uh, you do the clockwise to get all the directions cor correctly. It's the same thing as if you do draw a wall in in Revit and you do it counterclockwise. Uh, the orientation will be well the, exactly the opposite. But, but but so there would be my that would be my my uh, rating and then I just accept it and I'll wait a moment that it will basically load the content and once it is there. So that's quite fast method of, of getting the getting the railing railing inserted to the to the project. What it actually does also after insertion is that it creates a group out of this one that can be uh, normally used and copied for example to other other layers layers and so on. The why it's doing a group is that it's actually building on the background when we when I insert that railing, I could actually do another one as an example here with also with the glazing. So let's do and the same thing with uh, railing. Let's take a different one. I want to have this is perfectly. And let's do glazing height will be. Uh, 1,800, I think I had three meters, the rating heights. So, oh yeah, I want to have this with some right there. Again, showing I want to do it from here to here. So now I'm in the second floor and accept it. And I'll jump to the 3D view after it's loaded. A bit patience needed. Depending on the complexity of the of the component it takes, and of course of the computer itself. So this again is created here as a group. So what it what it also does here is that it uh, it creates with that one insertion it creates the railing, it creates the glazing, uh, and it consists of several sub items. So that's why it's being created as a group, and uh, it can be of course ungrouped and, and start to edit it. But the easiest way of edit really to, if let's say that the geometry of this one would change, would be the easiest at the moment is to just remove it and reconfigure it. We will launch an edit function with the next release of Prodlib, and that's coming actually in a couple of weeks, but until then we still have to do a bit on a sort of hard way and, and, and use, it, use it there. I could add there just to, uh, to see also to have something else. This is the Lumons railing, so I can do there's a couple of options, railing with the post, or then they have also this uh, railing that depending on the length of the wall, it doesn't need to have any any uh, posts at all. So this is the overall height. You see that the user interface is slightly different, but the principle is the same. You do I do some selections 
of of the of the uh, glazing and then select insert and let's add it here in the side and accept it simple simple glazing it's the straight and in the 3d view is so there is the columns and the and the glazing as it is so this is in in revit again find what you need define the configuration and just show the location of it and then if we jump to archicad which i don't even have open so just a moment new I don't have a license but it's not a problem because I can still do a show you how it works to use the Archicad content oh yeah okay template is yes, yes, yes. so So the Archicad content would be, I want to open this. Where is the open? Okay, I'll open it from, from here. So there's the product manager, which will open it inside. So it's basically the same uh, manager to control the libraries. And, and once I get it open, in the settings, there was a place to define where the Archicad content has been loaded. So this is where it be, it's been located and our application is checking that the version what you have in this folder is the same that is the, the last version what we have in our servers. So uh, try to define the location in a place where you really keep the libraries because otherwise we cannot track if they are up to date or not. So that's a, that's a one thing to, to notify. So in uh, the libraries that the user can user can load, load the libraries that they want and to, to take them in use in, in Archicad is a bit different. There's the own Archicad's own libraries and objects and library manager tool where the, all the libraries have been loaded. So if I now want to add, uh, I had in my, where did I have it? In my, just a moment, it was on my desktop and then and there was Where was it? No, not here. Just a moment. I need to find my. Where were my libraries? I lost them. Brilliant demo. Desktop. Okay, I guess I have re uh, removed. I thought that I had, I had some libraries here, but but I then just load one something. It goes then all the way. So I want to have room on, and I want to download this. Okay, I, I think I've done some something with this one because let's see. Yes, I will create here a new new library. Object select folder. So now it goes to this these locations. And if I go browse and I want to say download. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. So now it's basically loaded, loaded the file, and I go back to the Archicad and library manager. Add, and now I should have my Archicad library here. Here's the Lumon. There's actually an English and Finnish version of it. So this is the it's a LCF file, normal AutoCAD uh, library file. Open it. Okay, and now it's basically loading into the to the project. And if I select the object, I should find it from the 
from the list here and it has basically this is the so I need to select here that I need to say that I'm doing straight L shape U shape or just uh, with different angles so if I take the L shape I can define the and 1,200 and uh, 4,000. I can define the heights and other properties, and then it's OK and add it. So it's a one-click object to add it. It is parametric, so then it can be modified. But again, native native uh, ArchiCAD object that works can be stretched and modified modified in in any way. But again, can be managed through the Prodlib, Prodlib manager and the files. But that's basically the principle in RCAD. So we share their uh, full libraries that needs to be, needs to be uh, taken into use through the library manager in RCAD. And then used as a normal, normal, normal objects here. So that's basically the principle how how the project works, this is the same with all the libraries. And now with this uh, Alnova, Lumon, well, Profin, yeah, had just some doors. This Vesiset has some rain uh, water removal system, but they are, they are actually operating only in Finland. So, so they, this content is available only in Finnish. So, but, but this is uh, something that will be developing and there's coming more manufacturers all the time. And, and we also appreciate a lot if you uh, give any kind of feedback as how we can improve the content, if you find errors in the content, uh, uh, any tips and uh, that we can also uh, suggest for our customers because they, well, they are ready to develop and push this forward because they want to serve that it's your life is coming easier. So, so that's why it's it's your feedback is really really important. We try to do the best what we can with the content, and we also do testing. But there's also possi always possible that different versions, different content, there's there's some some things that don't work as they are expected to be, or or some things can, that can be done better. So so yeah, please please comment on those ones. But but there's two um, uh, Oh yes, there's two two Lumen libraries. Uh, the the only difference basically is that the, the is that the other one is in Finnish and the other one is in English. The user interface inside the, uh, but the content is basically the same. It's it's uh, identical. So there's no no differences in that one. In Revit part we handle the. Uh, language manage uh, settings with just simple translations. So, for example, in this case, I have now translated the user interface into Spanish. Uh, the object itself is still used in English parameterization. Uh, so, so this is again up to the manufacturer that what languages we 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 use uh, in the uh, show for the user interface. In Archicad, it's done a bit differently. I don't see anybody typing. I'm just uh, looking at the other screen, so uh, I don't see anybody typing anything. So then, from my behalf, I'll thank you all for joining the this session. And if you have any questions, any comments, uh, you can easily send them, of course, with the email to our info at prodlib.com. That course, there's several of us who will be reading it, and there's also my email is also directly janne.virtan at prodlib.com. So you can. You can send any message message as well for for me directly, and I'll be happy to help if I just can. <laughs>